sure there must be a simpler way of drowning someone. Drown, Mr. Bond. I doubt you get the chance to drown. Kananga sets the pellet on the table and slips a long knife from his sheath. Kananga steps towards the two bound captives, his eyes fixed on them. He pulls up Bond's sleeve, exposing his bare arm. Kananga then runs the blade across Bond's skin. He makes one cut, then a second, then a third. On the contrary, Mr. Bond, I think you'll find those wounds quite thick. He raises his hand, and Whisper turns to the winch control. The metal frame Bond and Solitaire are tied to rises off the ground. Bond glances across at the pellet, then turns the face of his watch. The pellet adheres to the watch. Bond tries to get at him. Whispers working the winch controls. The frame, some six feet off the ground, is winched over a water channel. Blood from Bond's cuts start to drip into the water. Bond gets the pellet into his mouth. Kananka grins. The frame is slowly being lowered. The gate has opened and a shark makes its way through the opening towards the channel. More sharks make their way towards the blood still dripping from Bond's arm. and it rotates at speed. He uses it like a small circular saw to cut into the ropes binding him. His hands are free. He unties Solitaire. Whisper sees Bond forward roll and swing on the frame. Bond kicks Whisper and lands in an open canister. Bond closes it and Kananga attacks with the knife. Bond fends him off, but the armed Kananga forces Bond to the water's edge. Kananga lunges. Bond sidesteps and wrestles the knife from him. Both men fall in the water as the first shark draws closer. Kananga, with Bond's arms around him, 